Yes, we're back with another episode, another rider. Today we have the lovely Julie, all the way from the good USSA in San Francisco, and she's got a business which she's going to tell us all about. Oops. <laughs> I was like so excited. I was literally recording a video while you were talking. Hello, okay, it is no great problem. to be on the podcast. <laughs> Thank you for having me on. You're more than welcome. So, what's the business called? What's it about? Why did it? Ha how did it come to? grow and start the business is called methodology it is a healthy sustainable food delivery service that i started just over eight years ago because i was a busy professional in san francisco working long hours and i really struggled with finding healthy food that was convenient and that actually tasted good and was high quality like i tried everything that existed and i thought everything tasted gross frankly so mm -hmm. i ended up having to start my own thing. I never meant for it to be a business. I started with just managing a personal chef and then friends kept asking to get added on and it just kept growing. And so okay. one day I quit my job in tech and decided to do it full time. And, and that was just over eight years ago. Okay. So you started off in tech in Silicon Valley then? Yes, exactly. I was what one was of those. Like? Did, what was those kind of people? Oh, it was a wonderful experience. I mean, I'm very grateful that I have a background in tech because that's what enabled me to build the proprietary tech that powers the supply chain for my current business. So one of the reasons why methodology can have restaurant quality, complex, sophisticated menus that you just wouldn't get from a normal catering kitchen is because of my background in tech. We, you know, we've invested millions of dollars into building software that helps organize our shopping and our cook sheets. Okay, so when you was in tech, your excuse me, your your role was to what build apps? Build? Yeah, exactly. I worked for a tech company called Lumosity, and I ran growth there. So, the growth team in particular built the onboarding experience into our cognitive training app. Okay, that sounds all very technical. Very good. <laughs> So your friends are the ones, because you saw them, there's, there's a demand of your friends, you realize that this can work into something. Yeah, exactly. My friends kept ordering every week. At first I thought they were just doing it because they were my friends. Mm -hmm. And then I had a reality check from my boyfriend and said, your friends don't like you that much. <laughs> They've been ordering for nine months now. Like you're actually solving a problem for them. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you should do this full time. And I ended up quitting. And, and my boss at the tech company, who's still my mentor today, he was the CEO of the tech company, he was the first investor in methodology. Okay, so he saw up in, so he saw something in you. Yeah, he believed in me. That's good, that's, that's a great story. So the journey, we'll talk about the journey of when you've got this chef, you're doing the food, he's, just, he's doing food specific for your diet, mm -hmm. personal mm -hmm. chef. Your friends come on board, they say, we want some too. They start all that. Have you still got that same chef today? Oh no, we have been through so many chefs because the business has grown and evolved so much over the last eight years. Mm -hmm. And so we have needed to, across the entire business, constantly just level up the talent. Because the kind of talent we could hire at that time when it was just me working in tech and this was just, I wouldn't even say it was a side hustle. I wasn't trying to make money off it versus the talent we have now. Now methodology delivers nationally across all 48 states in America. It's one of the biggest healthy food brands. So now you know, the kind of talent we can get in any part of the team is just really different. So there are some chefs, there's actually one chef, Dennis, <laughs> who has been with us since year one, but the head chef at the time that we started is no longer with us. Okay, these things happen. Mm -hmm. So. That's interesting. What kind of food is it? You said it's healthy food. Is it like vegan? Is it pescatarian? Is it's, it... I would describe it as being a very, it's, it's a cross between a Mediterranean diet, except that we don't use any wheat or dairy or refined sugar. So it's like an even oh. healthier version of the Mediterranean diet. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. So. So, but you do have meat, you do have fish. Yes, we have meat, we have fish. There are vegan versions of every meal, uh, but most of our customers enjoy eating seafood and meat. Yeah, I suppose, and you suppose you had to go through a process of validating the food sources. Oh, exactly. What we are like? very strict. Fortunately, in California, there are organizations that do the vetting for you and will publish 
publicly uh, what is sustainable. So for example, for our seafood, there's an organization called the Monterey Bay Seafood Watch List, where they thoroughly research and then rate all the seafood in California. And so we will only source seafood that they rate a green as far as sustainability, meaning it's very sustainably uh, captured or mm -hmm. if it's farmed, then it's very sustainably farmed. Mm -hmm. Is seafood that's farmed, is that actually good? Because I heard they pump it with loads of drugs to keep the fish from getting sick or something like that. Oh, well, as with all things in life, it's not black and white. There's a full spectrum of how sustainably you can mm -hmm. operate an aquaculture farm. Mm -hmm. So there are very poorly run farms that will be pumping the seafood filled with the same kind of things that you don't want being pumped into your the feed of meat, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then there are very sustainably run farms. And we have to believe this is possible because without sustainable aquaculture, there isn't going to be enough seafood mm -hmm. for the world to continue eating seafood at this rate. So we mm -hmm. have to continue investing in sustainable aquaculture. Mm -hmm. Okay. What has been the thing that you've learned that you wish you knew when you started? I think that the most important thing I've learned for my mental health that I know now that I didn't know then was to stop comparing myself to other founders and to stop comparing our business to other businesses because in the early days I used to do that all the time and I always felt like our business wasn't growing quickly enough and I just always felt self-conscious and anxious and uh, like I was failing at my job and this just kept me in a very negative energy state a lot of the times and now the only thing that I compare is I compare our business today to where it was in the past and I just feel so proud of where the product is today relative to where it was in mm -hmm. year one and now I can lead my team and run my business from a place with just joy and peace and love and I'm just so much happier as a founder now. So no, I get that. You're growing, and it, because I've had a business before, and I had that mindset of, yeah, what's the name? Yeah, let's destroy the competition, destroy. But it's not about that. It's, it's really about where have you been? Exactly, where, where have you, you been? Going? And I don't and even what set. Have you learned? Sustainable future. Exactly. I don't even set revenue targets for the team anymore. As long as our business is operating profitably and the product is getting better every year, which we, we know when it's getting better, right? Based on customer feedback and retention. Like that's what I care about. And just the joy of the journey now. So I used to be really unhappy when we would fall short of hitting revenue targets. And now I just don't even set them because all that matters is that I continue loving my day-to-day -day work and that our product continues getting better every year. I've heard people say that the good system to business is not always creating another business. It's once you've got a business that works, just copying that throughout the country, which is what you've done from the sound of it. Exactly. Our model was working really nicely in California, and so we expanded it across the 48 states. Mm. And How we, hard was that? <laughs> because that's, a, that's because you're dealing with product, you're dealing with premises, you're dealing with staff, yeah. and obviously salary and all those things. And suddenly you're going from one place in San Francisco to 48 places it in took years. it took several years <laughs> it took several years and on top of everything you mentioned we wanted to design custom proprietary sustainable food packaging because we were dissatisfied with everything that existed on the market off the shelf today and so that also added to our timeline uh, but for us because of the fact that I'm not in a rush and I'm not trying to hit particular revenue targets. I and my co-founder, we just want to do things properly, even if it takes longer. And so, yeah, relative to other businesses who started the same year as us, we went national maybe three or four years after our competition. Um, but I think the wait was worth it because now, now that we are national, I believe our product has the best packaging, the best food quality. It's because we took our time to scale properly without sacrificing quality and yeah I'm proud of that it's not easy to make that kind of decision yeah. because you kind of have to put your ego aside and say hey revenue is not gonna it's gonna be flat to barely growing over the next few years but once the product that we take the time to build properly goes national you know that's when we'll reap the rewards mm -hmm. of all this effort that we're doing behind the scenes that no one knows about mm -hmm. I'm with you.
That's, I'm very impressed. Now, the food that you serve is already cooked. You make sure it's ready cooked. Exactly. And they just heat it up, whether in the microwave or the oven. Or exactly. Microwave, oven, stove, fully cooked, because the target customer is that busy professional who just on weekdays does not have the time or energy to cook a meal. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's really, really good. And also, I just realized, you do you work with Uber Eats or something? We don't. We deliver. Uh, we're just direct to our customers ourselves. Uber Eats takes a huge cut of revenue, mm -hmm. so that just wouldn't be yeah. a viable channel for us. So you have a big fleet of motorbikes or e-scooters <laughs> or... We work with couriers. We work with couriers who deliver and oh, handle the last mile delivery for us. We have some couriers who um, are contractors for us to do some special routes, but we mostly plug into third-party courier services. Where can people find you? On our website at www.gomethodology.com. Do you want to spell that? Yeah, G-O-M-E-T-H-O-D-O-L-O-G-Y. What, thank you for that. What does the future hold? Well, we just recently launched a five-day reset, and this year we're going to launch more variations of that. And then another thing I'm very excited about is our Californians love the Thanksgiving box that we do every year and this will be the first year that we will have that box available nationally it's a menu that we've perfected for i think four years now and i'm really excited for people all across america to experience thanksgiving done the methodology way I hear you. I hear. Uh, what does the future hold for you as the founder as the person i am excited and ecstatic and grateful to continue improving our service for customers because I I want them to look forward to healthy eating. I want healthy eating to bring them joy. I don't want them to ever feel deprived so that they can eat healthy consistently, improve their health over the long term. I'm, I'm inspired to continue innovating on our menus, on our packaging, continue to uh, incorporate the latest findings in nutrition science mm -hmm. always into our menu so that we're always on the cutting edge. And and then for me personally, I am actually hoping to settle down now that I've, I, you know, I've been working so hard <laughs> the last eight or nine years in my 30s. Now I'm actually starting to date <laughs> properly. So maybe I'll like finally settle down and get married, which will make my parents very happy. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can believe that. I can believe that. That will be uh, very interesting. That will be an interesting one. Yeah. Well, we wish you well. Thank uh, my you. My last question would be, for any young people out there who want to follow in your footsteps, what would be your key words of advice? The most important thing is to just have a very clear vision of what it is you are trying to build. The more detailed it is, the better. Uh, that's one of the things that I learned the hard way because you can't really build and manifest anything in life unless you know exactly where you're headed. It would be like if I got in this taxi and gave you four different locations, like where would you drive, right? Mm -hmm. So be really clear on what it is you are trying to create in this world. And once that vision is clear, I promise you, the universe and the energy and the people around you will collude to help you bring it to life. It just needs to be clear and it needs to be something that you believe in with like all your heart. Okay, well, thanks a lot for that, and we wish you well. Thank you. We hope that episode enhanced your life. We post an interview every day, as well as vlogging on our social media channels. Don't forget to subscribe to get our latest episode.